Praise the Lord. I just thank the Lord for his guidance and direction because uh, I actually had several directions I could go. And I wasn't sure, and I've been praying all morning, Lord, and the least likely direction to go was the direction he just took us. So I thank God for that direction that he has given us in the service. And, and what Brother Steve brought out is, I can't get too far away here. I've been directed, brought out is very important because it's that relationship and it's that being able to go to God that we get what we need to carry out and, and you know, do what the Lord wants us to do. He has made a way through Jesus Christ where we can go and get everything that we need to get what we need because we ain't got it. You know, we ain't got it, but because of Jesus Christ, we have access to the throne of mercy. And one thing that the Lord is going to require of every one of us that we cannot do in ourselves, and that is to do exactly what he did, is lay down our life. That's the reason why he told the rich son of the ruler to pick up his cross and follow him. And one thing God is not going to do, he's not going to take my life. But he's going to do a work in me by which I lay my life down, just like he did. And you're not going to do that in yourself. But because of the way that he's brought out through Brother Steve, we have access to his grace and mercy, his power by which we can lay down our life for the brethren. Because we, it's easy to say I want Jesus Christ to flow through me because he's brought that out to us. That's the only way anybody can get any help. Well, what exactly has to happen for that to happen? There's where the work starts. Getting me out of the way. I got to get out of the way because I am not born with a nature that wants to cooperate with the will of God. But God has made through his son by which I can obtain what I need daily to lay down my life for the brethren. To do what I don't want to do and to go where I don't want to go. Because exactly the way Steve has showed us. Christ made a way to get what we don't have. That's what he done. Because we ain't got it. And the way that we're going is a way of death because God is not trying to fix my flesh. He's trying to kill it. And it's done with a cooperation and a participation with me. He's got to change the way I'm thinking and he's got to change the way I'm going. And this is not in myself to do. Many, many moments, I think in prayer meeting, I express it. Many moments, I wake up in the morning and I'm going, Lord, I ain't doing all the stuff I did yesterday. No, I wore out, I'm tired, I ain't doing that, I ain't going there, I ain't doing this. But I begin more and more to realize I'm not making no decisions this early in the morning. I'm not saying what I am or am I going to do, but uh, what I do do is I tr try to get this relationship cranked back, kicked back in, plugged in and stuff first thing before I start making decisions in the day. And by the time I get through with this, a lot of times I go out the house and I said, Lord, I'm going to take these situations as you bring them one at a time. And with through your grace and mercy and strength, hopefully... I can be obedient to what you want me to do. But I'm not going to worry about what I ain't faced with yet. I'm going to take it. And a lot of that comes with getting plugged back into God. Every day. Every day. And one of the things that I've learned that, that is so important is, 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 is coming to that place every morning and, and waiting on the Lord. And, it, and it's amazing how he does renew my strength. And it's become very real working on these exercise machines. I like to be able to run and not be weary and to walk and not faint. 
And that's what, Lord, you, if you don't get me in there, I ain't going. <laughs> the hardest thing I do is to drive to get there. Once I get in there, so I'm fine. But it's the drive getting there that I have all the trouble in. You know? <laughs> and the Lord, I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. And it's all about him bringing us to a place to do these things we don't want to do. Which is lay down our life. Because that's how others get healed. This flesh has got to die so that Christ can flow out of it. And that's how people get help. I can't help nobody. I can't help you and you can't help nobody. Oh, Jesus Christ can help everybody. It has given up our life. It cost our life. And when we do that, Christ is able to flow through us. In so many practical ways, I've, I've, I've learned that up there. Because of the, the word coming forth just bears witness with the spirit. And, and I, I'm able to see how the word of God works in people's life. The word that is coming forth in this ministry. I'm in a position to see how it affects men. How it affects people. How it changes their whole life. And Men are, getting, men are coming up here and they're getting behind this pulpit and they're just trusting the Lord. And a lot of times they're dying to what they really, do you think I want to be up here? I'm going to tell you something. I argue with God continually. Continually. I'm always telling God, look, are you sure you got the right one? Really do. But God has a way through his spirit to enable me to do the things that I don't want to do. And I've learned to trust him. You cannot say that you obey God until you start trusting him. You can say you trust God all day long. But until you start obeying what he says, I, I mean, all you got is some kind of theory fooling yourself. It's your actions walking in the light as he is in the light, taking one step at a time. It's a cooperating and participating. As you can say, I'm trusting God. If you're just standing there, I'm trusting God. Sir, you ain't trusting nothing. And we grow in the Lord by what? Believing the word is true and stepping out. Believing that what God said he will perform and he will do. And he has never, ever one time disappointed me. Not ever. And there is confidence with that. And it's learning like Brother Steve said, you, you learn to recognize God's voice. You understand. You, there is something you, you know when you know. And you learn to cooperate because God always gets his man. And you sit there going, well, I know it's going to be the easy, a hard way or the easy way or the hard way. I'm going to try to go this thing the easy way because I'm tired of getting my butt beat. So you start trying to, Lord, help me go the easy way. Help me to surrender what I want to do to what you want to do. And that's what it is. It says work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. What is he talking about? He's talking about surrender. That's what he's talking about. That's the work that has to be accomplished in, in us is a surrender to be obedient to the Lord and what he's asking us to do. So, so many times, you know, you think about the, 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 and I forget the guy's name who had leprosy who went to Elisha. He said, go dip seven times down there. Well, what, ha what did he have to do to be clean? He had to go dip seven times down there. He had to be obedient to the word of God. I seen this in a real way, too. I'm kind of short circuit where I might want to go. But I seen a man get salvation because the word was spoke to him and told him what to do. And he went and do, and the Lord saved him. The Lord saved him, became real. Uh, I hope I ain't going out on a tangent here, <laughs> but I'm going to share 
What happened with a person who got saved? I mean real saved. And it was because he did what the Lord told him to do. He did exactly what the Lord told him. And when that happened, I thought of what, what brother, brother Fred told me in his salvation. Billy Graham spoke through that TV and he said, go over here, come over here and lay your hand on the TV. This is a, a, a heroin addict who for the first time listened to a preacher and he saw something in there that he'd never seen before. This was the guy that goes shoot heroin in the park. And then, you know, you got them evangelists come through the park. He would argue with them. The only God he knew, his one time in his life, he had been a Catholic, where they speak it all in Holland. He didn't know. But he, this, he cut Billy Graham's hair that day. He's flipping around the channel, and there's that guy who cut his hair. And he said, what come out of that man's mouth? He had never heard before. And it hit him in his heart, and he sat there. He said, Billy Graham said, come over here and put your hand on the TV. And he got up, and he walked over there, and he put his hand on the TV, and it changed his life forever. Oh, God saved him right there. And I was thinking, how many people <coughs> heard that but said, I ain't doing that? I ain't doing that. Go put your hand on. Nobody gets saved that way. How many people did that? But that heroin addict got up, and he wouldn't put his hand on that TV, and he became a servant of the Most High God. That second, that second, used by God, would go into the mountains and preach salvation to many, many people. I've seen many people come to the Lord behind his messages many, many not just a few and he's a very humble man too and God used him that way and the brother I am talking about I, I, that I've seen this really happen sometime back I told y'all that after a service one night Fred brought this guy and he said he said Rick this is the exact question he said Rick this man wants to be saved what are you going to do? And that's when I told him. I said, tonight, before you get in your bed, you get on your hands and knees, and you cry out to God, and you tell him, do whatever you have to do to save my soul. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if he did it that night or later on, but I'm going to tell you something that happened to that boy. And I got evidence there was so I could tell you a long story behind what all was going on with him, but I'm gonna tell you there was fruit that that boy did exactly what he was told to do. And do you think the Lord did any less? He saved that boy. And the evidence is clear, very clear. I could go into a long story, tell you all this other stuff. It would take a while, but but I'm gonna tell you what the evidence was crystal clear that this boy did exactly what he was told to do. He did it, and the Lord saved him because he did what the Lord told him to do. There is so evident that the, this guy, he's concerned about his relationship with Jesus Christ. Concerned. He reads the Bible. He's got all kind of questions, and the Lord came down in a prayer meeting one night. And the Lord spoke. It was on unforgiveness. And this boy shot up in this small group there, shot up. And you ought to see, he shot up. He said, that's it. That's the problem. He was stuck. You know that? He was stuck. He didn't know what it was, but he knew he was stuck. His relationship got clogged up. And he's praying and saying, Lord, what's wrong? He didn't know what it was. But what happened, and I can tell you this story, what happened is a lot of things happened that I was going through. I told Shelly when we read in the wall, where well, God was pressing me. And it got down into this Bible study, and I, had, I, had, I could have said everything was all right. I'm doing fine, which would have been a lie. But when, and I, all through, before we get into this, I'm arguing, am I going to tell the truth on where I'm at? 
I learned something very important. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay. We're not going to be okay all the time. But I knew the preacher because I'm in his group was going to ask me, how are you doing? And I've sat there for 45 minutes going through this pep rally that he does before we broke up in these small groups. And I'm going, am I going to tell the truth or not when he looks at me? <laughs> but when he pointed me out and he said, how you doing, Rick? And I opened my mouth, it all came out. This all came, and I told him all I was going through, the, pre, the wheel of the, my wheel and God's wheel was doing like this. I mean, just going like that all the time. And I couldn't understand it because I had been so cooperative with the will of the Lord. And then now I ain't. Now I ain't got to want to. I, it, I was going, I was doing things that I didn't even, whew, talk about being out, being disobedient, talking about being out of the will of God, talk, Man, I was doing it on steroids, and I was realizing it, and I would just have to stop, and I'd go down my room, and I'd pray, oh, Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm out of control, Lord, I'm, you know, pray, and I'd say, well, I feel good, I'm geared up, I'm ready, I'd go back up there, first thing happened, I'm on my face again. I couldn't do nothing about it. I couldn't wheel myself enough, I couldn't get, well, that I could... I was, I've always been submissive, cooperative, and all stuff. It rolled off me like that. Again. But all of a sudden, it can't. And the Lord, in my prayer meetings about two weeks before this, started as brother lessons from the garden, started warning me, I'm praying for weeks on end, that there was something coming. I began to feel it in my prayer meeting. There's something coming. I started praying for it then. I didn't know what it was. I said, Lord, I feel in my spirit. There's something coming. And I was actually in this when I left. My will to do the will went somewhere. I don't know where it went. And during this time, I wasn't getting no CDs from here or nothing. I wasn't getting no. I was on a spiritual fast going through this. And it was concerning. I mean, I had a confrontation with one of my bosses. I had, uh, the, I got accused of not wanting to do something, and boy, I, th I let them know. I ain't wanted to do anything since I got saved. <laughs> what do you mean I don't want to do something? I'm in the director's office going, what's the point? I mean, I've been doing stuff I didn't want to do since the Lord saved me and going where I don't want to go since that. I mean, now I'm being accused I don't want to do something? Yeah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I have all, my cooperation, my t trying to 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 uh, to be obedient to the will of God just left. And I began to realize something very important. My will to will to do the will of God is not coming from me. It's coming from God. It's coming from God. Coming the very way that Steve showed us. There's, I have no access through God except through the blood of Jesus Christ. And through that way, I get everything I need to be the servant for the Lord God on this journey I'm on. He supplies everything. I mean everything, even the will. To do it comes from him and this connection. But it came out in this prayer meeting. I just got, I just laid it all out and told the preacher and the other guys in the group. And something happened in, in, in my letting this all, in, in my mind, I saw a hand pull down this scroll. I'm just going to tell you like I saw it. And I began to read what I was on the scroll, and I really forgot what was going on around me, and I began reading what was coming out of this thing, and it's coming out, and that's where all the stuff about the unforgiveness, I, it started to, I didn't know where this come from. I was just reading it as I saw it, and it was, and the Lord just brought out that the, the, the biggest problem we have on the hill with these men and their connection and the reason why they have problems is unforgiveness came out so plain. And not only that, the, the preacher in his little 45-minute pet rally said something that I knew wasn't right. 
But I never would have confronted him on it. I never would have went, never. But the Lord had another idea. And, I, and, and the Lord corrected him on this as I read it off. And not only that, but he gave a scriptural reference behind that. And when that come out of my mouth, that preacher jumped back about two foot and looked like he had seen a ghost. Now, I don't know how that hit his, what happened with him. But I'll tell you what I saw from the outside. Now, he immediately recouped and went back to his. But he, when that came out, it looked like he had seen a ghost. I mean, I'm, and that's when the brother over here jumped up and said, that's it. It's unforgiveness. And then when we got back up on the hill from church, he's got this phone, and he's calling all these people just as hard as he can go, trying to get this thing connected. And the next day, I met him in the hall, and he said, Rick, he said, I've done it all except for one person. He said, they don't believe in God. They don't know nothing about God, nothing like that, and I don't know what I'm doing with that. And I said, well, you just do as much as you can do, the Lord, and let God worry about the rest. But when I, I didn't say nothing to him, I wanted him to just press forward as much as he could as much as the Lord now. But I thought about later, I thought about, you know, Abraham did not have to sacrifice Isaac, did he? He just had to be willing to. And all that is about is taking our will and bending it with God's will. And once that is done, the work is over. So you may not actually have to do, you just have to get willing to. And the Lord say, you know, he did told Abraham, you ain't got to sacrifice your son. He just had to be willing to. And I, I thought about that when the situation he was in. Well, he went as far as he could go. He was willing. They, I basically said, forget about it. Forget about it. The Lord brings it up again. Deal with it then. Until the meantime, forget about it. The best counseling you will ever give anybody is two things. Drop it and forget it. That's, the, that's good counseling right there. Drop it and forget it. Because everything is in the past from tomorrow. We start out on a new day in Christ. Whatever happened there is over and done. My worrying ain't going to change it. Your worrying ain't going to change it. It's over. We got a fresh start. When the sun comes up, we connect with the Lord and we press on. That's it. That's the walk we're on leaving it all behind. But there's a scripture that really says the point of everything, and it says, Paul, it's in Galatians. Uh, let's, it's so important. And, and the Lord the other day just really, it, it, the Lord used this scripture one time before helping me, and then I saw it. And it, it really says what the Lord wants us to do. It said, I have been crucified with Christ. And I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now have within this body is the result of my trusting in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. There ain't nothing left to say, Artie. God's doing a work in us. And he accomplishes us because we have access through Jesus Christ, through his blood. He has given us everything that we need because he wants to lay our life. He wants us to lay our life down. When we lay our life down, Christ can flow through us and he can accomplish that that he wants to do. And I think that that is a good place to end it. God wants to flow through us and he's going to do this by getting us out of the way and we're going to it's going to be because we cooperated we participated we went to God to get what we need every day to be the servant of the most high God God's given us something to do has he participation 
and cooperation leadeth the people coming to the Lord. They come to the Lord because Christ is going to flow out of us and he's the only one that can help anybody. And sometimes that's going to happen because you put in some awful situations. Terrible situations where, where God is squeezing us like he did Christ in the garden. He's squeezing. They get olive oil out of them olives because they're squeezed. They go through a process. And that oil comes out. And what comes out of God when God is pressing us, pressing us is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes out. He's the only one that can help anybody. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I tell you what, I am just filled with so much joy being in here. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. I wish I could walk in every church I come in here and feel the love that's in this place. I, I, I mean, it's, it, it's Jesus Christ on steroids in here. I mean, it's the only way, on steroids, it's just, it's powerful. It's powerful. You know, and the closer you, when you, when you connect with Jesus Christ, when you have that connection, it makes all of this make sense. It makes all of you make sense. And you, the Spirit makes us bear witness with the Spirit. I tell you, I, I hope and pray that you are taking in what the Spirit of the Lord is bringing out in this ministry because it's that old and darkness is coming. Darkness is coming. It's coming. And I'm going to tell you something, brother, brother Ron, last service I sat in, Brother Ron said something. He asked us a question. He said, how big is your God? I'm going to tell you what. That message was sent from the throne of God. I want you all to know that. And if that went over your head, you need to go look at it again. Because I'm going to tell you something about what God asked of us. When we get down into that darkness, you better know how big your God is. Because it might be too late to find out. And how that message was used was incredible. It was just the start. Some of you might not realize that there was a prayer meeting and a, and a men's meeting before that message even come out where God confirmed the message that was given to the brother, Brother Ron Pierce. Confirmed it. And not only that, that was the last service that I was in when I left here. The next church I walked into, the preacher got up, and you know what he said? He, Brother Ron gave us a general uh, summary of Esther. Well, this preacher got up there, and he said, from the next nine Sundays, we're going to do an in-depth study in Esther. And so many dots got connected. And uh, I teach a class on, on, on Friday evening, and... Uh, I was, y'all remember the uh, service that Jim Simler had, uh, Cry at the Gate with Mordecai? Well, I think it was about the seventh week. I was, it was on my mind. I said in my class, I want to play that CD. Well, on the seventh week, I remembered. I was sitting there looking at the CDs. I needed something, and there it was. I keep all of his CDs stacked on top of each other right there. I said, yeah, that's the one I want. And we played that, that Friday night. And I'm going to tell you, much like the prayer meeting we had last night where you, you uh, had somebody you would pray for. Right? Somebody pray. Well, after this was a very short tape. It only lasts about 30 minutes. And we had, a, you know, they have a big prayer meeting after that, I, if you've ever watched it. And I said, we're going to have a prayer meeting too after it was over. And I'm going to tell you something. I said, what we're going to do is we're going to pray for somebody else. We're not praying for us. We're going to pray for somebody else. You, and you, you pray. And I prayed for all them men. They was in a circle around me. I said, I'm going to pray for all of y'all. And I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. 
This prayer meeting probably didn't last 12 minutes. But the Spirit of the Lord came down in power and might. And four men looked like they'd seen a ghost, a Holy Ghost. It, I mean, it was... It, God confronted four men in there, and they came to the Lord. They surrendered. And I believe what started with that prayer meeting, the, whole, the Lord had this whole thing in, in mind. This is what he had planned. And the, all the dots that connected was because God was going to confront four men. And he did. Boy, they, oh. I'll tell you what, it, the Lord moved in power and might. And all started there. And sometimes, I guess in my position, I'm in a place where I can see the whole story of how something happened and see how it, all the dots can connected to where the Lord is going. I wanted to share that with you. But it's important to know how big our God is. That's, that's, that's a big thing. That's not a little thing. When we we go we go into a place where all the discs that we've been claiming we know think we know you better really know it. Don't go to pick up that armor and know that you ain't you can't handle it. You better know you can use that armor now instead of later. I think that is from the Lord. I do. And uh I just want to pray for the church. I want us to, to, I want us to come to realize how real Jesus Christ is and how he's talking to us, how the word of God is relevant. It's relevant. Now is the time to get that old. Don't opt out now. Now is the time. The store is open. If, if God is speaking to your heart, say yes. And you don't even have to know what yes means yet. You don't have to know anything but say, Lord, like Abraham said, here I am. He gave us, here I am. That's all God wants. And he'll lead and teach you the rest. I, I think salvation is something that God works on us. He draws us. And if you don't think you have the Lord, just say, God, Lord, I don't, I, help me. Help me. Go find you a place where you can go and cry out to God and say, God, Help me. Here I am. I don't know what I know. I don't know anything. I will tell you what. God will fill up an empty vessel. I think that's a lot of my problem. I got too much in there. He's pulling it out. And, and you men that you know the Lord. You know the Lord. Pray that the Lord will give you living water. Living water that will flow out of you, that will help others. Spend time with the Lord. And say, Lord, I know who the man at the well is. It's you. Give me living water. So that the living water will flow out of me and help others. It's not only going to help you, but help others. Because that's the only way anybody's going to get healed. I tell you what, let's, let's focus entirely right now on Jesus Christ. Let's lift our hearts to the Lord. And pray that the Lord will move the church in the direction that he wants it to go to. That he will begin to fill us with himself. That he can use us. 
This world is gone. It's destroyed. And God is concerned about people. He's concerned about others. Don't put your plans on anything in here. I mean, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all the other will be added to you. And when you draw nigh to God, he's not going to cause you not to be responsible for your responsibility. He's not going to do that. He'll make you able and more able to do your responsibility. And not only that, he might, not, he might take away some of the bull you got in your life. That you're thinking is something that needs to be responsible now that it really don't need to be responsible. But it's because you want it to be. And you're getting bogged down and weighed down by the stuff you want to do and you can't do nothing for God. Because I've been there and done that. Occasionally I get... Sometimes we have to stop and say, hold everything right here in the course of your day. Hold everything. My God gives me peace and rest, and if I ain't got it, there's something wrong. A lot of times I, I will do that. I'll be caught in, I'll be like, whoa, stop. Stop everything. Hold it right here. And claim the peace and rest of God because my mind is done when there's circumstances, all this stuff. I'm fine. The world will take your peace and rest away with me quick, fast, and in a hurry if you let it. But we claim the peace and rest of God. And I know I'm going on and on, but praise God. It's still early. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's pray. 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 I'm going to tell you what. We can always pray. You get confronted with people that got situations and you don't know what to do. And the Lord's going, pray. That's what you do. You pray for them. Because he's the only one that can help them anyway. You can't. Pray for them. When you get in them situations... I will tell you what, if somebody walks in your path, God made it happen. Remember that. God made it happen. Share Jesus with everybody you can. Everybody you can. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you've got depression, if you can be depressed after you share Jesus Christ with somebody, I will eat this Bible. I will eat this Bible. I think that's totally impossible. And if you do have depression, I suggest you look at that unforgiveness thing too. That is a big thing for depression. And a lot of times, it might, it, it, God may be speaking to your heart only softly about this. You may be just totally discounting this thing. But it's really a big thing. And I'll tell you about it. God is not going to let this mountain go away. And you're stuck. You're stuck until you become obedient to God. And, it, and when you're stuck, you're double-minded. Unforgiveness is being double-minded. And in James, it says the double-minded man need not expect he received anything from the Lord. So if you're talking to people about Jesus, you got it wrong. It didn't come from the Lord. Maybe you can share earthly wisdom with them or something like that. Maybe that. But it says you need not expect you receive anything to the Lord. I'm just telling you what it says. And if you got unforgiveness for somebody and you take communion, that's probably one of the most scariest things I can think of. I mean, we go to a church where they take communion the last Sunday of every month. And three times I didn't do it. And uh, I know the situations where some of these men and people, and I see them doing it, and I'm, all you can do is pray for people. Because Paul said you drink judgment on yourself, and it's the reason why some are sick, some are weak, and some have died. That scares the... <laughs> Lord, Lord, we come before your presence through your precious blood that you shed for us, through the way that you have provided through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, through that blood, we are cleansed from all unrighteousness. We claim it so, Lord, because you have told us it's so. 
You say you are our God and you will strengthen us and you will hold us in the right hand of your righteousness, Lord. And we believe it so. We believe it. And we come to you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing for us. We thank you, Lord, that you are using our weaknesses and our shortcomings and our failures and character defects. You're using all of this stuff, Lord, our insecurities, our fears, to draw us in, Lord, to bring us to a greater understanding of the truth in you, Lord, Christ Jesus, Lord. For it is you that take away our, all our fear and give us power and love and a sound mind. You take away our unbelief and you give us a double portion of belief and you take away our disobedience and you give us correction and obedience, Lord. And Lord, through your provision, through your enablement, through your empowerment, Lord you, Lord, you help us to do the things we cannot do. And you help us to go where we cannot go. And Lord, you do the work in us and you continually do the work in us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we thank you for strengthening us, Lord. We thank you for giving us your courage, Lord. Your wisdom and your knowledge, your power and discernment, Lord. And we thank you for giving us peace and rest and joy and happiness in you. Contentment in a sound mind, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that as you will do the work in us, as you bend our will with your will, we pray that you will give us what we need to stand, Lord, as soldiers in your army. We pray for your provision, Lord, that you will enable us to endure, Lord, that you will help us, Lord. We pray that you will keep us in the fight. You will keep us focused on the fight, and you will keep us faithful in the fight, Lord, and all these things cometh from you, the Lord. You are our Redeemer. You are our Savior, Lord, and we cling to you, Lord. We cling to you, and we draw nigh to you, for all things are possible through Christ, Lord. We can do, Lord, anything. You are our strength, Lord, and through you, Lord, all things are possible, and we cling to you, Lord. Through your precious word that is true, Lord, we draw nigh to you, Lord. We can do all things through Christ who to strengthen us. And, Lord, you are our ever-present help in time of need. You are with us. You are for us, Lord. You are lenient to our failures, Lord. You encourage us. You love us. You teach us how to love, Lord. You are all things good. And all love floweth from you, Lord. It floweth out of the Father through the Son unto us, Lord. And we pray that you would make us an expression of your love all around us, Lord. Love will conquer all, Lord. And we cling to you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. For through that precious blood we are saved and our names are written in the Lamb's book of love. Life. And we rejoice, Lord, and we thank you, and we praise you, and we thank you for saving us, Lord. We thank you for healing us, Lord. We thank you for delivering us, Lord, and we thank you for putting forgiveness in our hearts, Lord. And, Lord, we cling to you, and we pray that you will enable us to abide in your love, Lord. And we praise you and thank you. We pray, Lord, that you will be blessed with this service this morning, and we just pray, Lord, that you... We'll do the work in us, Lord, that you can flow through us, that others may be helped, that they may come to a knowledge of the truth in Christ Jesus, because you are the only one that can help anybody. And, Lord, we just put our lives, our hope, our future in your hands, and we wait, Holy Father, for you to come and get us. We wait for you, Lord, and may we rejoice in your coming. Praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God praise. Praise God.